Today we are gonna learn how to make a keypad. Let me open my script. Today we're modeling a very basic keypad in Blender. It's gonna be nine keycaps and a base. We'll do the materials in another video. All right, let's go. Start a new file. Delete the camera. Delete the light. Keep the default cube. Select it. Hit tab to go to edit mode. When I hit tab, I have this pop up. You probably won't. This is an add on to use. Once you're in edit mode, hit 3 on your keyboard or press this button up here to get to face select mode. Select the top face. Hit S to scale and bring it in some. Hit G to move and Z to only move it on the Z axis. We'll move it down a little bit. I think that's a nice shape. Hit 7 on the numpad to get to top view. Control R to make loop cuts. You'll see that we can do it over the Y or the X axis. We're going to do it over the Y first. Use the scroll wheel to scroll up until you have three loop cuts. Left click and you'll see that you have the ability to move, but we don't want to move them, so we'll just right click to cancel that. Do the same thing again, but this time on the X axis, so Control R to make loop cuts. Be sure that the blue line is going the opposite direction now. Scroll up to get three of those. Left click, right click, and now we have a grid on top of our keys. Hit one on the keyboard or press this button here to go to vertex select mode. Click out so that nothing's selected and choose proportional editing. It's the circular button right here. Select your middle vertex and hit G, Z to move it down and you'll see that there is a circle around it that can be controlled with the scroll wheel. That's the proportional editing. And we can pull down and see what that does by making the wheel bigger. I think that looks good. Now we are going to bevel the edges because nobody wants to type on a sharp keyboard. Click out so that nothing's selected. Shift, Alt, and click this line, and you'll see that you get the whole uh, edge. Do that around the top of the keycap so that we have the whole top selected. And also do that on each of the corner lines. Again, Shift, Alt, click. Once all that's selected, hit Control B to bevel, and when you pull your mouse away, you'll see that it creates a bevel, but it only has one segment. Use the scroll wheel to make it smoother by scrolling up and adding more segments. I don't want to do too big of a bevel, but you can do it depending on what style you're going for. Make it very soft. Uh, I'm going to do mine about there. All right. Hit tab to get out of edit mode and back into object mode. Right click on your keycap and hit shade smooth. And there it is. Looks pretty good. Next we'll line it up in a grid. Hit 7 on your numpad to get to top view. And with the cube selected, go over here to the wrench, which is modifier properties. Add modifier and under generate in the second column, the first option is array. When you choose that, go to count and ch change it to 3, and we can leave everything else as is. Add modifier, add another array modifier, it'll be this the second one down. In the count, change that to 3, and then for factor, the x should be 1, change that to 0, and change the y to 1. And then we have a grid. I want a little bit of spacing in between, so we're going to change that Y from 1 to 1.1, and then on the other modifier, we will change the X from 1 to 1.1. There. Now we have a nice grid uh, with even spacing. Now we're going to apply the modifiers. Always do that from the top down. You can hit this little button to get the menu and apply, then do it to the next one. Great. Now this is one shape. I like to control C, control V, just copy paste a copy of it, double click on it and call it cut cube. We use this later. Hit the eyeball next to it so we don't see it and it doesn't mess us up. Select your original cube 
and go to edit mode by pressing tab. Hit A to select everything and P to set the rate <laughs> by loose parts. Once we've done that, we can go back to object mode and we will see that we have nine cubes. This will allow us to make an animation of the keys dialing and moving independently instead of the whole keypad going up and down. Let's make a base. So we will shift A to add a mesh and then cube. Hit 7 on your numpad to get to top view. You can also do that by pressing the Z over here. Hit G to move your cube and move it to the middle. It's okay if you're not exact, just do your best. S to scale and pull it bigger than the keys. S to scale again. Z to lock it on the Z axis and make it a height that you think looks good. And do it about there. And G, Z to move it down on only the Z axis. And let your keys show through as much as you'd like, um, depending on how tall you made them, you know, that kind of thing. I think mine look good right about there. All right, let's add a bevel to this cube. So make sure our base is selected and we are in the wrench, which is the modifiers tab. Add modifier and under array that we added before, you'll see bevel. Go ahead and click that. It gives us one segment. If that's the look you're going for, great. I want something a little bit smoother, so I'm gonna increase those segments until it looks how I'd like. I think that looks nice. And you can also increase the amount to get a uh, more extreme bevel all the way to a circle. We're gonna go with that. And we are done for now, but if you'd like to add a little bit of extra detail, we can add a Boolean modifier to this base. And it should default to difference and object type. And under object, you can hit the eyedropper tool and choose our cut cube. Hit the eye next to the cut cube, make sure it's selected, G, Z, and hold down shift before you move the mouse. So this will allow us to move very slowly and get a precise movement. We just want to move it up a little bit. Because it gets wider at the bottom, this is going to cut the base so that it looks like the keys have a place to sit. It looks a little more realistic if you're doing a close-up shot. Alright, once we've got that where we want it, we can go ahead and hit the eyeball again, and we can make sure that that boolean is working on the base. If we zoom in, we'll see there's that little gap that, like I said, if you're doing a um, close shot, this will make your project look that much better. Select the base and we can go ahead and apply these modifiers from the top down. Once we've done that, since the modifier is applied, you can delete the cut cube. Don't need it anymore. And now uh, we'll go over here to show overlays, turn that off so we can get a little bit better view. And we did it. If we select one of the keys and hit G, Z, you can see that we can make a dialing animation. All right, we did it. Basic keypad in the bag. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer. If you found the video helpful, give me a like, hit subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram at futureboydoc or live streaming at twitch.tv slash futureboydoc.